Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Bless Nagini Ron. The girl in question is my daughter. She's my first child. I will state everything that happened. I don't like trouble. I don't like what in my life. I'm an easy going person. I don't like attention in my life. Oh, let me state what happened. February 9th was the day of their inter-house sports. That was the day I meant to have their inter-house sports. Anybody who knows Chrisland knows that Chrisland has their inter-house sports as a Gage Stadium. Last year, I was not able to go on time. My daughter was angry. She said, Mom, you did not even come on time. You did not even come and see me take part in the match pass. And I was marching. I was looking for you. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't know the way. I didn't know how to find my way to Agege Stadium. But I promise you, next year, I will be there on time. This year, I tried to go there as early as possible. I was there even before the program started. I met the admin officer, I met the principal, I met part of the PTA committee, I met parents, they were greeted, I sat down. March pass started. When the March pass started, I looked. The first house matched. I didn't see my child. Second house matched. I didn't see my child. Third house matched. I didn't see my child. I said, uh -uh. she's in Pines, which is greenhouse. I said, uh, maybe she's um, among the Queen's entourage. Because I remember she mentioned that she's among the, the entourage of the Queen or King or something like that. This was matched. I didn't see her. I said, okay, maybe she's in the arts and crafts or home economics or IT or photography, or something. Those ones all passed. I didn't see my child, I got worried. I called the school, her school bus driver. Mr. Said, please, oh, was my child among those you brought to the stadium that I have not seen her, I've been in this stadium now for, going to some 30 minutes thereabouts, and I've not seen my daughter. He said, ah, mommy with me, I brought her, she's in the stadium there. Don't worry, you will see her. I quickly left to go and do some things. I said, okay. No problem. I, as this time, the match pass was still going on, you know, dignitaries, parents, teachers, you know, everybody was matching the year 12 final year students. They were all matching. I didn't want to interrupt the match pass because parents are opposite where children are kept. As after, after I finished speaking with the, with the driver, he said he, he brought her, I said, okay. Maybe she got hungry and had to leave and buy something outside. Because she had breakfast before leaving the house. I made sure she had breakfast. Then she was going for inter house sports. And she was with money. I went to the snacks point outside. I didn't see my daughter. I said, ah, ah where could this girl be? So I waited. Match pass was over. I crossed to the other side. On my way there, I met a, a man. The man said, ah, madam, parents are not allowed at this side. I said, ah, I know. I just want to check on my daughter. He said, okay. I went in there, and I saw some students there. And I asked a boy there, please. Meanwhile, before I got to that across, a bus sped by on high speed, zoomed. And I said, ah, how can a bus be driving like this when you know children are in the stadium? But I just said that, and I, I went on my own. So when I saw the boy, I said, ah, please, I'm looking for Whitney. I didn't hear on. The boy said, ah, a girl just fainted here. But they have taken her, the school bus has taken her to the hospital. I said, ha, ah, a girl fainted. Oh, may God give her quick recovery. Why did she faint now? Anyway, I'm looking for Whitney Adenio. She's my daughter. The boy said, the girl that fell, her name is Whitney. I heard them calling Whitney, Whitney, when they were pouring her water, I said, Jesus. But it's not my own child. My daughter's name is Whitney Adeniro, and I brought out my phone. The boy said, I don't know her son name, but I know her name is Whitney. I brought out my phone, and I showed the boy her picture, and he said, this is the girl that fell. I said, what? What happened to her? Why, why would my child fall? She hasn't done anything strenuous. She wasn't sick. She hasn't done any, any activity. What is going on? Why would my child faint? A man was there. The man said, ah, Madam Ibilo Durosi, Oshubu, a mini modo missilara, meaning she was standing here, she fell, I poured water on her. I said, ah, ah. who took her? He said, school bus. No ambulance, no doctor, no nurse, no medical personnel, nobody. There was no emergency provision on ground in a place where you have over 500 students. In a place where you have over 100 parents. In a country where insecurity is so high. You kept our children in that field with no proper medical arrangements in case of any emergencies. 
When the boy said the school bus took, I said, oh, was it my child that was in that bus that sped by? I ran out. I met a staff coming towards me. The staff said, oh, mommy, Whitney, we've been looking for you. He was so calm and casual. I said, oh, mommy, Whitney, we've been looking for you. Um, Whitney fell. I said, yes, unless she fell. He said, oh, yeah, she fell. But well, don't worry, she'll be fine. We've taken her to the hospital. I said, okay, let's go to the hospital. Immediately, I picked my phone. I called my husband. My husband wasn't picking. His PA said he was in a meeting. I said, please get the phone across to him. I don't care who he's having that meeting with. Even if it is the governor, go and give him the phone. It's an emergency. The guy went and gave my husband the phone. I told my husband what happened. My husband said, okay, no problem. Go to the hospital. I will make a few calls, and I will meet you there myself. I'm on my way already. I asked the staff, please, where is the hospital my daughter was taking to select him as the principal? We asked the principal. Principal said it was Agege Central Hospital. I said Agege Central Hospital. She said yes. I brought out my phone. I put it on Google Map. It wasn't showing. I put it again, Agege Central Hospital. It was not showing. What I saw was Agege Central Mosque. I said, ah, Central Mosque, Central Hospital. Ma, it's not showing. She said, don't worry, just ask around. Go. They would they will tell you. We drove out of the stadium to the gates. We asked the gatesmen, we don't know. We asked, as we were driving, we were asking people, please, where's Agege Central Hospital? They said they don't know that. What they know is Agege General Hospital. And I called, I said, ma, is this Agege General Hospital or Central? I said, it is Central, that is very close to the stadium. What we couldn't locate, but don't worry, just ask around, go. They would, they would tell you. We drove out of the stadium to the gates. We asked the gatesmen, we don't know. We ask as we are driving, we are asking people, please, where's Agege Central Hospital? They said they don't know that. What they know is Agege General Hospital. And I called, I said, Ma, is it Agege General Hospital or Central? They said it is Central, that is very close to the stadium. But we couldn't locate the place now. Nobody we were asking knew where it was. We were not able to get um, it on Google Map. I told the driver, you know what? Let's go to Agege Central Mosque. It is central, central. Maybe if we get to the central mosque, somebody will be able to help us and show us where the hospital is. That was how we left. Fortunately, on our way there, before we got to the to the central mosque, we saw their school bus by the side of the road. So we automatically knew that was where she was. I jumped down from the school bus and I rushed in. Rushing in, I saw the woman that went to her, the staff that went to her. I said, Madam, where is my child? What happened? Why did she finish? She said, I don't know. She's in there. I went in there and I saw my daughter's corpse. The Sola did not say anything to me. I went in there and I met my daughter on her deathbed. She was already dead when I got there and I saw her. All this happened in less than 10 minutes. She was already dead. She was drenched. Sucked to the skin, water was dripping. I knelt down. I called on God. I shouted. I screamed. I felt her pulse, no pulse. I put my hand on her chest. It was deadly silent. My daughter was silent. I asked the doctor there. I said, Doctor, what happened to my daughter? The woman looked at me and said, Eh, madam, from the way I'm saying things, is like cardiac arrest. I said, cardiac what? Whitney was 12. She was 12 October 30th last year, 2022. How does a 12 year old have a cardiac arrest? No pre existing medical condition, no pre existing heart condition. She was hale and hardy. She was not sick in any form. If she was sick, I would never allow her to leave the house. If she was sick, if she had even minor headache. I would never allow her to leave the house if she was sick. I would have taken her to that school myself, but she was not sick. She was looking forward to the inter-house sport. Why was she not there? Why did my daughter die? I said, okay, even if she would die of cardiac arrest, why should one cardiac arrest kill a healthy teenager? Just one. She not get stroke. She's not in coma. She's not unconscious. She's dead. And let me state this. By the time I got there, my daughter's lips had already turned black. Her tongue was turned black. I shook her. I held her by her shirt. That picture I see where she's lying down, I held her by her clothes. I jerked her up and I threw her and my child fell. No response. I carried go out my body. She was flopping. She was flopping. I kept asking the stuff that came with her. What happened to my 
my child. What happened to Whitney and Demira? This is my first fruit on earth. Me, Loyuri. Oh, you are going to call me Lion Lele. Kilo Shelley. So, mommy, nobody could give me an answer. Not long afterward, the principal came. Other staff scheme, even admin staff scheme. By then, my husband too was already on his way. By the time my husband got there, my husband did not even call the mind off because I didn't, I didn't tell him. He was driving. I didn't tell him anything. I just said, just start coming. He said, Have you seen her? I said, I've seen her. Just come. When he got there, he when he got there, he packed his car. He didn't even put it off because his mind was okay. Let me go in and pick my child. And let me state, my child was not taken to a hospital. She was taken to an immunization center. But that is not even my pain. My pain is there was no proper first aid management. There was no proper management. There was nothing that was done for her. She was brought to the hospital dead because when her medical reports came in, it said dead on arrival. That was what her medical report said. When my husband came, he went in straight to where she was to pick his child and go to another hospital. He came in and met her dead. He screamed, shouted, that's all I that is, yes, stand up. What is happening to my child? My husband knelt down, crying, begging doctor, doctor, please help me. This is my first child. Imagine God must hear joy, know me. I cried. I begged them. I will sell everything I have for my child to be alive. The woman looked at me and said, Madam, it is too late. Nothing can be done. She's gone. I've been asking Chris Land. What happened to my child? Nobody's telling me anything since on Thursday. What happened? Nobody. I'm just hearing different stories, different stories. They were at my house yesterday. I told them, I knelt down. I said, please, mas, you are mothers like me. For the sake of God, I tell me what happened. I don't want to have to open up my child for autopsy. Let me bury this girl in peace and let it go. Please tell me what happened to my child. They are not saying anything to me. Oh. They are saying, oh, she slumped. Oh, she slumped. Oh, she slumped. How? How? Parents are calling me. Oh, Mom Whitney will sympathize with you. Somebody said, oh, I learned from the school authorities she was a sickly child. I said, my child sickly? My own child sickly? That is not true. I'm not an irresponsible woman. I'm not an inner irresponsible parent. Me and my husband, we place our children as priority. If my child complained of even a slight headache, she would never have gone to that school that day. She would not have gone. I would take her to the hospital immediately. Milo money, how many I get? How many I get? I will take one day play. How many? Chris stand up to this moment is not telling me anything. They're telling me, Egba Kadara, go and bury her. Egba Kadara, how do I accept Kadara that my first fruit, my 12-year-old, is late, is dead, out of carelessness? There was no ambulance. There was no medical doctor on ground. There was no drink personnel. Why was she drenched in water? Who poured water on her? What happened? Nobody is telling me anything. They're protecting their school integrity. Egba me, Egba me, Egba me. I'm seeing some comments that is breaking my heart, but I will not curse you. I will pray for you and I will say, the pain I'm going through, may you never experience it. This pain I'm going through, may you never, is, I don't have an enemy in this world, but I will not wish on my worst enemy. I pray no mother has to go through what I'm going through. I your police, if you are a father, come to my rescue. Life suits, my daughter's body is in your mortuary. And by me, Chris Land, what happened to this all at any room? You put will answer me. No matter what it takes. If it takes my last blood, you will answer me. You will tell me what happened to my daughter. If it is the last night before I die, you will tell me what happened to this all. You will tell me what happened to my daughter. All this your story of she slumped is a lie. I don't agree. We still will not do my picking. Soon they had not. Oh, but, oh, but come to my rescue. What's it for me? Oh, this love that what's it for mother? Me don't ever shall remember your boy. If you are a mother in this world, be gone.
I'm on my knees. I can I go to pity me. Oh, I'm not asking for a protest. No, all I want is answers. I want to bury my child in peace. I need closure. I need closure to bury my 12 year old. And the closure I want is answers. Finish. That is all I want. All I want is answers. Anybody that has answers, please. If you are a mother in Christland High or baby, let me ask your children what happened. You could lay about my knees. If you are a mother and your child was at that stadium on the ninth Agege Stadium, help me ask your child what they know. Hey, Jotori, you know I'm on I'm on my knees and pleading and begging. Please help me. If you have a child in Christland High, your niece, your nephew, you are a guardian, anybody. And they can tell you truthfully what happened to Omode Sola Whitney Adeniro, my first child. Please help me. I just want closure. I am not asking for a protest. I do I'm not interested. I'm not asking for a protest. All I want is my child. All I want is for me to bury her in peace. I've already bought caskets. I don't agree. I don't buy casket, no problem. They say I'm not going to use my hand burying my picking, but I'm not going to use my hand burying my picking. They say that she go bury me. Well, I'm not the one burying her. There is no problem. But can Chris Land tell me why a child that was hale and hardy and went to their care came back to me dead? That is all I ask for. Thank you. Mm. Um, good evening, fellow Nigerians. First of all, I want to sympathize with the family of Anedira. It's such a very, very unspeakable, unbelievable thing that in this day and time, despite all our shouting, despite all our cry, despite all our appeal, despite all our agitation, that every child deserves a responsibility to be protected. I don't know how more I can console this family. I have been on the phone with the family. I've spoken to the mother, I've spoken to the father. I've spoken to the school authorities and Why we go to the talk? We keep shouting. I beg, you see, what I want to say now might not be what everybody wants to hear. If anybody decides to strike, if anybody decides to do anything now, you have the right. You have the right. We cannot continue to bury our own children. Madam, I don't know. I just pray that God gives you a divine I pray that God gives you a divine grace. I pray that God will comfort you from a different angle. Because for a child to wake up and go to school to participate in inter-house sports and the next thing is this child falls down And the next thing is to start pouring water. Where ambulance? What kind of negligence, mistake could have happened 
They say they won't go burn Chris land. If they do that when you reach like that, it pass like that. But then Joe, I have spoken to the mother. I want to plead with you for everybody to be at peace. I tell people the reason why people come to social media, two things. It is either you are coming for justice or you are coming to seek for pity. But this woman has come out to seek for justice for her child. And everybody has lent their voice one way or the other. And all I can say now to witness family is exercise just a little patience. We have mandated that the coronary inquests and autopsy be done. That person will talk, say that Pekin is small, make them go bury the girl. No better for you. Pekin died. They don't know what to keep Pekin. Una go they preach. Una go they preach. This family is aggrieved. Please, I want to plead with everybody. Let us all exercise patience. Just little patience for the next 12 to 24 hours. And let the school come out to tell us what it is we need to hear. One thing is very sure. This is not the case of Doen. No, 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 no. This is not the case of Doen. Nobody should try anything. Don't try it. No matter how connected you are. No matter how rich you are. Don't even go there. This is not going to go down well. Everybody is on standby. Hope every time we go to fight. Not be every time we go to a para. But I beg, Mama, with me. The thing where my ear don't hear from your mouth, from the mouth of the school, from the mouth of everybody involved. I beg God, beg you now. Let us exercise just little patience. 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 The case is in Panty. The child's body is in lawsuits. They will not bury that child. An autopsy will be done. And once an autopsy is done, then we have a right to go ahead and do. You people have pushed Nigerians to the point where they will take law into their own hands. The government has neglected the cry of the people for too long. Institutions don't regard parents and children as they should. If not, why well, not go and do it at house sports? Una go get ambulance. Pekin down, I found the rush Pekin go the nearest hospital where CPR not there, no oxygen, no nothing. I want to plead with everybody. I'm a woman who loves to fight. But there are some situations. The fight can't do it. The fight cannot do it. Everybody, please keep calm. Everything that needs to be heard has been heard. I don't want to agitate anybody. So all I can say is for everybody to keep calm. And one thing, the mother has stated clearly what she wants. She already don't go buy coffee and say she won't bury her picky. May she just bury her picky. May she they go. She has taken it as her own faith that she will be the one to bury her child. And nobody, nobody should experience this. But Chris Land, for the last time, we want to give you a benefit of doubt. We are mandating you to come out and say something. If you fail 
Any lawyer where they advise you now, be anybody where they tell you now, say kuna no worry. They go worry for now this time around. I swear. Everybody keep calm. Some people say they want to go and burn Christmas. If they burn and reach it pass like that, but that is not what we need right now. Please, Ejebure, peace. Let's be calm. The matter already has is already straightforward and clear. The matter is very straightforward and clear. There are no denials. There are no nothing, 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 nothing. Let's just allow the family, the school. To go the route that is expected. Commissioner of Police, Lagos State Government, Governor Babajide Sholu, Commissioner of Education, a round table meeting, a round table talk, a round table negotiation with immediate effect is the only thing that can solve this matter on ground. Nobody can defend or deny anything. That girl didn't deserve to die. I want to plead with you all once again. A job. Thank you to everyone that has been thanking me for all the calls. I've not ignored anybody. I've only been working back end. And thank God this matter is already halfway sorted. I just want to plead with everybody. Patience and all of us will not mourn again in Jesus' name.